and the host name is esx one dot cookie dot local we haven't got a default gateway at the moment but that will leave it like that just warning you there's going to be data loss setting time zone that's fine okay jumping back to vCenter server it says asking here and saying that the uh, the previous version of VMware Tools is already installed so it needs to uninstall it that's currently formatting what I'll do is I'm going to press pause until the next dialog box pops up okay this is the next dialog box that's popped up so a typical Windows install of next 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 finish that's still formatting and I'm going to press pause again until the next box pops up okay here's the next box that popped up just to let us know that VMware Tools is finished we're not going to restart yet because we've got one more thing to do now one more thing we've got to do is install DNS server just waiting for Here we go, it's a custom configuration we want. DNS server. Currently installing the kernel at the moment. Okay, click next. We're just creating a forward lookup zone. This server maintains a copy. The zone that we're going to be using is that. That's fine. I want both secure and non secure dynamic updates. Shouldn't forward the queries. Searching for root hints, which is going to fail because we're not haven't got any root servers available at the moment. Okay, that's done. And it's just complaining that it can't find any root hints, which is what we expect. Okay, let's. Now we can reboot the server. So we've changed the server name. Uh, we've installed DNS server. We've um, upgraded VMware tools. Let's give it a reboot. Okay, and I'll pause until the uh, server comes back up again. Okay, server's come back up. Need to change the password actually from the template one to something a little bit more interesting okay I don't want that showing up anymore and let's put the DNS admin onto the desktop see what we have so far and the 
the answer is not a lot. We need some more records. So we need ESX1, which is going to be 10.0.0.1. Uh, ESX2, 10.0.0.2. And then we can't forget OF. What's OF? Open Filer. ESX1, ESX2, Open Filer, and vCenter is uh, already there. So ESX1, ESX2, OF, and vCenter Server. Okay, let's change the background to something a little bit more interesting. About nice green, okay. So, how far has ESX got left? It hasn't got long to go, but I'm just going to pause it until it comes up with the finish. Okay, ESX installation has uh, just finished. Notice there you've got the IP address of the server that we're going to be connecting to when it's all done. <coughs> so just watch the ESX server boot for the first time. Okay, server's up. Let's go into uh, the vCenter server and just going to check some IP connectivity first. Good, so it's responding to pings. Now by hostname. That works too. One more thing that I've got to remove. It's the Internet Explorer enhanced configuration enhanced security configuration so see so we can find there it is so I can remove that Okay, let's go to ESX1. So we're just waiting for the web page to load at the moment. So, yes to that. Okay, and this is the first page you'll get when you connect to uh, ESX server. You get a similar thing actually when you connect to VMware server, but um, but here we go. So we've got download the vSphere client, which we're going to do in a second. The vSphere client is used to connect to um, ESX hosts, but it's also used to connect to VMware Center. That's quite important detail to remember. Uh, so I will download that. Stick it on my desktop. Um, Obviously, you've got a VMware Center there. You've got login to Web Access, which um, is normally just for remote users. You don't normally do any administration through that. Uh, and then you've got browser data store, so that's data stores that are connected to the ESX hosts itself. Okay, the download of vSphere client has completed, so let's have a look at that. Okay. 
There it is on the desktop. So let's kick off the install. Let's see if anything goes wrong.